everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This is The Word with Joy. Uh, my name is Nima Ovori. So I hope everyone is doing good today and we're going to have a great time. Um, for usual, if you like the video once you're done watching, you click on the like button, you know, so more people can be told about it. Um, and of course, go ahead and share. If you have truly been blessed and think it's going to impact somebody else, like share and be like, hey, you need this. Um, and finally, subscribe. Seek me part of the cool kids club okay subscribe <laughs> um, and remember to click on the notifications bell so you are notified when a new video comes up all right so we are going to continue what we we're talking about last time the prosperous seed because um, I feel like there's still more to say right the, the, didn't you feel like that too like there's still more to say so that's why we're back at it um, let's pray first the Holy Spirit would ask that your word will bring enlightenment and it will also bring the power to obey to will and to do of your good pleasure in Jesus name amen amen all right so again our original text was Zechariah 8 12 and it says for the seed shall be prosperous the vine shall give its fruit the ground shall give her increase and the heavens shall give their dew. I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these. Um, so last time we talked about like the conditions of, you know, the, the conditions that make the seed to be prosperous. So light, water, <clears throat> the ground. So all of that. And we ended up talking about how our heart is truly like, you know, that environment that will make the seed of the word of God. We're talking about the word of God at the time to grow and truly be prosperous and to bring forth that which we expected to bring. Um, but you know what I was thinking about? The fact that, okay, so it's winter time right now. And, you know, like all the trees, when you look at, at the trees right now, you're going to be like, oh, like there's no beauty, there's no leaves, there's no fruit, nothing to eat on the, on the trees, um, no shade, no flowers. It's just like a... They don't just like branches, brown twigs, just, they look dry. They look like there's nothing going on. But that doesn't mean that the seed is not prosperous, right? Because of the seasons. So I just want to encourage somebody and say, you know what? You are, you might be, you know, using the word of God to address the situation. And it's not, it just looks like it's not changing, right? It's just, it's still brown. There's no leaves. There's no fruit. There's no shade. There's no beauty. Nothing is coming out of it. No tree is blossoming. No plant is blossoming out of it. But remember when we read last time and Jesus Christ was explaining the parable of the sower and he said the good heart is one where you receive the word, you keep it, and in time with patience, you get your harvest. So it's when you, you know, with time. So don't automatically think, well, overnight it's just going to change. Sometimes it works like that. That's how miracles happen. But other times the word truly has to simmer in into that situation and let, you know, just let the season come naturally for when that word is going to explode and become harvest. It will soon be springtime. I don't know how many more weeks we have. I don't know. But we should have more, more less of winter happening now at this point since we're getting into March. Um, and yeah, we'll see like the same tree that you thought was like bad. Like, can you imagine if like we went around going, oh, these trees are horrible. I'm going to cut them down because they don't look nice. No, but that's just not their season. That's why. And when the, the season comes, the whole topography will be changed. The whole scenery everywhere will look really beautiful. It to be, you know, green again, flowers and all of that. And, you know, I feel like, okay, here in America, when, because we're used to just going to the grocery store to buy fruits and vegetables, you don't really understand how, like, seasons truly, like, indicate what you can eat. Like, back home in Nigeria, like, when we eat, like, corn or eat peanuts, groundnut, or, you know, like, mangoes or fruits, like, you do have to wait for the season, you know. It's not just there all year round. Everybody understands, it's, you know. It's rainy season, so whatever can't grow or, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it, there's no corn right now. Like, it, it just makes sense. That's, we are truly, you know, based on that kind of farm agriculture-based system that the seasons do make a difference and the time they get looking for something makes a difference. So just so you know, you know, also with the word of God, the season for that word has been given to you and that you've received by faith and you're speaking it just may not be time to blossom, but by faith. You know, Jesus Christ said, with patience, with patience to come forth. Um, and I just want to read real quick Galatians 6, 7 to 10. This is a very popular one. Galatians 6, 7 to 10. And it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will reap. For he who sows to his flesh will be, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart 
you shall reap if you not lose heart in due season. Do not be weary. This, again, this is just a confirmation of don't stop doing the good that you're doing. Don't stop speaking the word of God over that situation. Don't stop doing those things and sowing good things into people's lives and speaking good things into your own life because in due season, it's going to come. Don't. It's not going to be instantaneous. It is going to come and you'll be able to receive your resources. Um, and something else that we want to talk about was that if we go into Matthew 15 on the flip side, Matthew 15, 18 to 19. And this says, hold on. So this is Jesus talking about, I think they were, they were saying, oh, don't eat something because it's going to defile you. And he was like, no, 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 it's not what you eat that the what goes in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. And so Matthew 15, verse um, 17 do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So what he's trying to emphasize here is that what is in our heart, those things that are in our heart that come out, that's what shows what has been sown, you know. It's not overnight the person's just going to become a liar or whatever. It's like they've already been sowing those seeds. They've already been sowing those thoughts. I know we know that in, um, I think it's Proverbs. Let's see if we can go there. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, 7, the first part. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So we, this is the other point I'm trying to make is that seeds are also thoughts. And those thoughts will become a harvest. So just as Jesus Christ said, what is in your heart? It is a seed. So whatever the man is thinking, whatever he is, so is he. So whatever he's thinking, so is he. Because his thoughts will bring actions, which will bring the fruit, which will bring the harvest, and on and on. So we have to be very careful about what we put in our thoughts. We have to be careful about what we put in our heart. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart, in your, my heart that I may not sin against thee. That is the one way to shield those evil thoughts, those negative thoughts, those selfish, selfish thoughts, those carnal thoughts, those fleshy thoughts that want to take over and create a harvest out of our lives. I mean, God will have mercy on us. Of course, we haven't always done everything right. We haven't said the right things all the time. We haven't thought the right things all the time. But in his mercy, by the blood of Jesus, we can cover those things in the, that happened in the past and say, God, I, you know, I was ignorant. I do know better. I'm sorry for the things that I said. Let it not come back. Even the thoughts that we had, you know. Oh, there's also another verse that talks about us bringing into captivity every um thoughts let's see where is that yeah second corinthians 10 4 and 5 and it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of christ so whatever thoughts out there seeds are not right whatever seeds are against what God came for, whatever seeds are against the word of God, whatever seeds are against the plan of God for your life, which you know is good and wonderful and filled with hope and a great and bright future, you need to bring those seeds into captivity, throw them out to be like, I remove this thought. I remove this thought of I'm not going to be able to do it. I remove this thought of I can't, I can't make it. I remove this thought of I'm never going to be rich. I remove this thought of I'll never make an impact. I'll never be a leader. Like those negative thoughts, you know, Remove them, bring them to captivity because the word of God doesn't say that about you, right? It says that he will give us, you know, we will flourish in our old age. So don't think of, oh, I might die early. That's not a thought that is in obedience to Christ, right? The word of God says that by his stripes we're healed. So when you're saying, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. No, that's not a thought that is obedience to Christ. So whatever I thought is against the knowledge of what you know about Christ, what you know about the word of God, bring it into captivity Throw it out of your mind. Take it away. Don't allow it to fester. Don't allow it to grow because as we know, like he said, it, it, whatever is now hard, those seeds will grow, they'll become fruit, and they will become a harvest in due time. You think that, oh, it's not going to happen. You know, I've, it's just, you know, something I said when I was little, be careful, be very careful what they say. I always tell my kids, be careful what they say, because, you know, they're telling their heart, they're believing those things, and the seeds will start, like, growing, germinating. It will not come right away overnight. It will just spring for it one day in a big harvest. So that's the word for today is that um, we should remember a couple of things that there are seasons to the word, there are seasons to the seed, whatever seed, you know, so don't be discouraged when you think that my seed is not prospering. It is, it's just, you know, wait a little bit. It's just like when you're pregnant, right? When you're two months, three months, four months, people might not know. That doesn't mean you're not pregnant, but in due time, 
the baby will come and everybody will be like, yep, there's the baby. She was pregnant. It will be undeniable. So just wait. Just wait and eventually it will happen. Um, and also, secondly, just be mindful that seeds are also thoughts. And those thoughts, you know, pour out into our hearts, out of our hearts and become whatever harvest we have been planting. And remember that seeds replicate themselves. So be very careful about the thoughts that you have put in your mind so that it doesn't replicate and become like great and big because it's a small seed, but it become a huge tree. So don't do it. All right. Okay. So we are done for today. Um, thank you once again for tuning in and Hey, we're looking forward to March. God is going to be with us and blessing us and holding us by the hand and teaching us daily his word and his truth in Jesus name. All right. Have a blessed day. I'll chat with you later. Bye.